actually uh, pretty extreme airstrips out here. They seem to be very excited about learning about God. There are no other missionaries living within 300 miles. Be in the air over the river short mile. You don't see the airstrip until you're about 200 feet above the ground. You know, in America, this would be just the course of the four. crossed halfway around the world to the island of Borneo. Borneo is one of the world's most isolated and remote areas, and today it still remains largely undeveloped. Indonesia's province, Kalimantan, occupies the largest portion of the island of Borneo, with Malaysia to its north. The geographical and logistical barriers of Borneo are forbidding. Dense rainforests, impenetrable mountains, arduous terrain, and the absence of roads leave villages isolated. Access is not only limited to the gospel, but also to life-sustaining services, such as health clinics and education. It was because of environments like this that Mission Aviation was created. In 1943, a handful of World War II pilots started looking for ways to use their skills to help spread God's love. Out of that desire, Mission Aviation Fellowship was formed. In 1969, MAF began to serve mission groups in the emerging indigenous churches of Kalimantan. And today, a team of MAF pilots, along with their families and support group, continue to provide vital aviation and communication services to these hard-to-reach people. Being a, a missionary pilot is a, it's an amazing uh, opportunity to minister because the, uh, the work we do with the airplane touches people's lives uh, at a number of different levels. This is a Cessna 206, and uh, it is the workhorse of the MAF fleet. MAF has, I, I think, you know, 40 or 50 of these airplanes worldwide. Uh, it can seat six people. One of the modifications that MAF uh, does with the planes, they, they install a cargo pod, and we put about 300 pounds of cargo down there, which is nice, because if the plane's full up top, we can just shove stuff down there. And uh, we'll put whatever we can fit through the door into that cargo pod. So we've had <laughs> pigs in there, or dogs, or ducks, or uh, whatever, whatever you do in there. Anytime I fly with David, um, I have a renewed appreciation for what he does and for the challenges he's, he faces every day. You know, I think of it as, oh, he just gets in the airplane and he flies off and, and comes home. And the pilots, they're safe, but they, they really put themselves out there flying over the jungle every day. MAF goes to great lengths to make sure that we have very good engines, new engines, um, so we rarely have any engine problems. But uh, when something like that happens, where you have one cylinder that starts to hiccup, I tell you what, it gets the pilot's attention pretty quick. My husband flies into villages that couldn't be reached otherwise, except for maybe a long boat ride on a treacherous river, or maybe a, uh, an even longer walk through a very dangerous jungle. The need in Indonesia is huge because um, it's vast areas of jungle and uh, transportation is extremely difficult. So we're serving the national church here. Without uh, mission aviation, they'd be essentially cut off from the outside world. Option set, check was complete. I think that being a wife of a missionary pilot is exciting because my husband gets to go out and do what he loves and that he just gets energized by helping people and so when I see him come home, he's exhausted. But for me, it's really, really exciting for me to see him just really content with where God has him. The reason we chose to come and serve people here or to serve people at all is, is based out of the biblical principle that we are blessed so that we can be a blessing. I know Paul really enjoys spending time interior and just being encouragement to people, hanging out with people and just getting to know them on a personal level and um, just to encourage other fellow believers around the world.
Today is a, is a significant day for Chris Jardin because it's his first opportunity to fly solo interior and it represents how many years of preparation? About 10 years of preparation leads up to this moment right here where he gets to fly interior without somebody else riding along with him. So it's, it's really significant and it's a, it's a great accomplishment. So in keeping with our local tradition here, we're gonna give him some captain's bars. Craig, you want to pin him on him since you were his checkout pilot there? It's exciting. I woke up excited this morning. Congratulations. Well, I think one of the neatest things I can say about missions today is it's different perhaps than most young people imagine or stereotype. And just because you're not a preacher or a teacher doesn't mean there's not a spot around the world for you. You could be a pilot, a mechanic, a doctor, a nurse, a teacher. You could be a whole lot of different things and there's a spot for you. Working here, doing what I'm doing, it counts for something. I'm not just working for myself. You know, I'm here to help the people of Kalimantan in the name of Jesus. And that's, I think that's something that's very valuable in ministry. When you hear people who've been helped by the airplane, like, um, brought out by, uh, for emergency, medical emergencies, and knowing that without the plane there would be no way for them to get adequate medical care, all of that just helps us know that what we're doing is, is important. When we come back, Chris makes his first solo flight into the interior. Plus, we head into the city of Tarakan to see the needs of the people and the outreaches of the Maya. A few months ago, we started a story time for the kids in our neighborhood. Would you like to bring all over the world to your church or ministry? you can by purchasing the All Over the World Worldview Small Group Experience. This six-week small group curriculum features and includes six of our most popular programs. Watch the shows and document your own quest with your personal travel log. You and your group will experience what God is doing around the world and find out how you can join the adventure. For more information, visit www.aotw.tv. All over the world's Missionographer Training Academy. It's where missions and digital filmmaking meet. And where people just like you not only learn the art, but also the heart of missions video. Enroll in our intensive four day workshop and you will get expert instruction on how to create inspiring video. With hands on shooting and editing, you may even be picked to help produce a future all over the world show. Workshops are enrolling now. To find out more, go to www.aotw.tv. off the coast of Borneo on the little known island of Tarakan. Tarakan is a marshy island just east of Borneo and it is part of the country of Indonesia. Indonesia is the world's fourth most populous country and it also has the largest Muslim majority of any nation. It was during World War II that Japanese forces invaded this small island to gain access to its huge natural oil reserves. 
Allied forces later attacked the Japanese with the goal to secure and develop the island's airstrip so that they could be used to provide air cover for subsequent landings. And while the war has ended, that airstrip is still being used today, but now it is bringing life to the local people who desperately need it. Mission Aviation Fellowship has established a base in Tarakan with the goal to help support the local church and reach out to the needy. It's overwhelming when you look around the city and you, you look at all the needs that exist, where we live, you, you see children like this, all the opportunities we have to minister, and you realize there are no other missionaries living within 300 miles of our city except our MAF team here in Tarakan. A few months ago we started a story time for the kids in our neighborhood and also for some of the kids that uh, go to our Indonesian church. We wanted them to be able to learn English and we also wanted them to be able to understand what we were teaching so we decided to start doing um, story time in English and in Indonesian. You mean the giraffe? Asked mother. So this is a way that we can have the neighbors in and that we can just, it's a non-threatening way to share God's love. Basically, I see my, my ministry as just being a friend to Indonesian women, and thankfully it's a really easy ministry to do. I just try to befriend Indonesians, and since they're so friendly and so ready to, to be friends, um, yeah, it's, it's a very easy thing to do, and I really enjoy it. Um, being a part of the team, uh, the MAF team here uh, in Kalimantan, is one of the, the greatest benefits, I think, uh, to our life here. Did you see it? Did you see it? We've got a young team. Most people here are in their, either their first or second term. So we have a lot of energy, uh, a lot of good camaraderie. Um, everybody's still full of energy and is really eager to help. Those are our friends. Those are our, our coworkers. Those are those that we, we worship with. I love this team. I, I, I can't say enough good things about them. The, the interaction we have as a team is really important because it just meets a, a social need, meets a spiritual need as well, having, having a strong fellowship with each other. Okay, as you can see, our planes are getting ready to depart and head interior this morning. What a lot of folks don't see is there's a lot of, a lot of work that goes into even our planes being able to fly in the first place. So there, there's a lot of maintenance work that has to be done. On a lot of our airstrips that have gravel or stones on, you can pick up a little stone and nick the propeller and then we'll just file it out. I'm uh, checking the fuel. If there's dirt or water in the tank. We have a uh, written checklist here with emergency pages and regular pages. So everything that's critical that we do in the airplane is going to be written down somewhere. That was my first landing on a grass strip solo out here in Indonesia and there's a bunch of rice fields right in the end so if you short it you buy the farm so, so <coughs> I was a little nervous but not too bad actually.
It's an amazing opportunity because our work gives us access to living in a country that is difficult for some people who are seeking to minister here. Jadi pada waktu saya pergi bikin ladang. About six years ago, I was working in my rice field out in the jungle, and I fell. And when I fell, um, I fell on a stick, and it went into my stomach and uh, ripped open. Um, my insides were starting to come out, and I was all by myself, so I put them back in, and I, uh, I ran back to the village. Um, I thought I was going to die, but if MAF hadn't helped me, I wouldn't be alive. From an eternal perspective, I see people who are able to live without so many of the things that, that I grew up with or that I enjoy if I go back to the stage. We don't have that, but yet there's joy in the midst of that. It's convicting. Hopefully, I'm getting closer to, to attaining that perspective. When we come back, David packs up the family and heads interior to spend some time in a remote village. That whole experience illustrates the, uh, the necessity of the airplane around here. And we get a chance to show the people the history of MAF. Hello, I'm Ian Skelly, producer and one of the missionographers here at All Over the World. We have enjoyed bringing you along with us on all of our adventures and showing you what God is doing around the globe. Our goal is not only to challenge and inspire young people to consider missions as a life choice, but also to bless the missionaries that we feature. That is why we as missionographers provide our services and the television stations that air all over the world donate airtime. But none of this would be possible without the help of viewers like you. Your support is vital and it can help change the lives of so many. Will you partner with us? Your donations will help us to continue to share God's love to those who have not yet heard. And with all of us giving our time and resources, we can make a difference. So join in on the adventure by calling the number on your screen or visit our website at www.aotw.tv. Thank you for making a difference. The island of Borneo has some of the world's most remote jungles. And reaching many of its interior villages is nearly impossible without the help of an airplane. Mission Aviation Fellowship and its missionary pilots are sometimes the only reliable link these villagers have to the outside world. And the Cessna 206 is the workhorse of the fleet. It's able to fly in and out of airships that are pretty short, uh, about 1,200 feet long. And uh, the challenge about this airplane right now, though, is that it uses a fuel called avgas. Avgas is uh, becoming increasingly harder to obtain in places like Indonesia. It's very expensive now. It's about $13 for one gallon of that. And this airplane goes through about 16 or 17 gallons every hour that it flies. So that's a real challenge that's arisen to our, our ministry over here is trying to figure out ways that we can continue to operate our aircraft. All right, we're gonna be flying into the village of Long Alongo with the family for a visit and a chance to uh, encourage and minister to the folks there. We're gonna, we're gonna take off out of Tatakan here, on the island of Tatakan and uh, fly directly out to Long Alongo. And it's good for the family too to get a chance to go into the village and, and see uh, you know, who we serve out there. Um, is this what I'm wearing? That's what you're wearing. <laughs> you know, our wives and the kids here on the program, they need to see what the dads are doing, they see what their husbands are doing because uh, they are such a crucial part of that formula to making it work that they need to uh, they need to see it firsthand. And so that's usually the only opportunity they have. And every time we do that, you know, my wife comes home, she's just more excited about what we're doing and gives her a chance to kind of, you know, recatch that vision that we have. Hey, Salamat Pagi. Salamat Pagi. Pagi mana. <laughs> this, is, this is Pastor Yahya. He's yeah. the pastor of this village here. He's a dear Christian man. He he keeps a prayer list and he prays for our staff, with his uh, with his with his uh, congregation here. 
Any fun uh, no. Parker? Having the kids come along with us is just an amazing experience for them because, you know, they get out of the little city where we live, they're able to run around. Right. They love coming out here and playing with the kids in the village, and they get to see how people live in a different place. It's always a little embarrassing to come with a lot of stuff because I've moved families, like moving to a different village, and they've had less stuff than this. But it's, a lot of this is, you know, we're bringing the projector and Generator. stuff we're going to be given to the people in the village, so later on it'll make sense. Track, but I think that may have broken the record for the longest line I've had to shake hands with. <laughs> this this village is almost all, uh, you know, almost 100% Christian. It goes all the way back to the influence of missionaries many years ago. In the past, there were people who said that missionaries would result in the loss of culture around here, but that's not the case. The culture is, is still strong. Uh, the ministry of missionaries has helped the area. You know, whenever I come to a village and I see how people live here and, you know, how they have so little and they have to work so hard for, for just their, you know, their everyday living needs, um, it's convicting to me because, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of complaining, um, you know, when my AC doesn't work or whatever. And so um, it's an encouragement to me to come and see um, how these ladies live their lives faithfully for the Lord um, and with a content heart. I am very thankful, very happy that MAF comes into my village because without the MAF plane, I would not have been able to get the medical help I needed. Here in the village of Long Alongo, there are lots of children, and they seem to be very excited about learning about God, and we're going to sing some and play some games with a parachute we brought. They've probably never seen one of those before. making waves until they got bigger and bigger and then all of a sudden I said quiet and the waves stopped just like Jesus when he was with his disciples so that's the Bible story we're about to go tell when I see the kids in the village and their little faces are looking up at me um, I just think wow there's so much potential here and I just you know my hope and prayer is that these little ones will be led to the Lord um, at a young age and that they'll grow up and just be a mighty witness for the Lord. a screen for the stuff we're going to show tonight. I'm going to show them pictures of MAF from uh, other locations around the world. Dave's going to be showing them uh, the movie Into the Spear, which is kind of neat because it goes back to the story of Nate Saint, who's one of the first MAF pilots. And we want them to know uh, what our heart is, you know, to help them. Before I watched this film, I didn't think too much about uh, the, the church and the you know throughout the world. Uh, after watching the film, though, I I realized you know yeah there are missionaries in other countries, and I felt like the Lord might be calling me to be um, might be calling me to be a missionary or or work in the church. Thank you. As the as the pastor of this village, um, we're very happy with the ministry of MAF because it, whether we like it or not, that is the best way to reach people with the gospel as well as medical help is through the airplane, and we're happy to support it. 
The missionaries of MAF are touching lives, but there is much more work that needs to be done. God is on a mission, and he has given each of us the talent and the opportunity to join in on the adventure. Harapan saya, uh, it's my hope that there will be more missionaries who can come to Indonesia. There are still many areas of our country that have not been reached, and we still need missionaries to come and minister here. For me, I want to look back on my life and have no regrets, and I think that stepping out and doing something as crazy as moving to Indonesia and living in a different culture, I think that it is a very rich and rewarding experience. I don't think it's something that you will ever look back on and regret. So the longer you delay, uh, the longer it's going to take before you get out here. There's no excuse that I'm, I can think of now that I'm here that would have been valid for, um, for keeping me from being here because it, it so truly is, it's amazingly enjoyable. He desires us to be a part of what's going on in the world and I would highly encourage you, whoever you are, I think that it's one of the greatest things that you could do. And your skills and talents may take you to Indonesia or may take you down two blocks from where you live, but in either place, God wants you to be a blessing to other people and you're gonna find your greatest joy there. To the people in America who support the ministry of MAF, I say thank you because without MAF here, I was not, I would not be able to have gone to get the help I needed. Oh yeah, the, the value of MAF here is is really hard to describe, and uh, we don't really get any help from the government as well. If MAF wasn't here, we don't know what we would do. Thank you so much uh, for what you all do for us here. Thank you for the pilots. Thank you for those that help MAF so that uh, we hope that you will continue to uh, help us and serve here for many years. On behalf of our MAF team here in Kalimantan, thanks for taking the time to watch the show. We'd also like to thank CTN and MAF for investing the resources to make it possible. It's our hope that after watching, you have a better idea of how you can pray for this ministry here and and also how your support is being used to bless the people in Kalimantan. So from all of us here in Kalimantan, Selamat Jalan! <laughs>